Hello, Lara friends. Here's what's new in your favorite PHP framework. Let's go. First, the level route list command received a nice little update. The route list command is there in level already for quite a long time. I'm pretty sure you have already used it. PHP Addison route list, and we get here this route, which was recently redesigned by Nuno Maduro. So this looks also quite nice here. And yeah, you can go through all the different routes here. And by default, you can see they are sorted by the URI, which is this part here. And also fair enough, if we check this out with the help argument here, and if we go to the sort argument here, you can see by default, it's been sorted by the UI. But there are also other things that you can sort it by the domain, by the method, by the name, by the action, middleware, and so on. So let's try another one. So let's sort by maybe method. You can see the method is this part here. And yeah, now fair enough, this is nicely sorted, delete get method post and put but if you take a look now at the ui part here this seems to be in a random order so we're starting here with l then f r so it would be nice to maybe not only sort by the method but also by something else and this is what you can do now in level with this new feature so if we can now add another arguments here like the uri and if we scroll up here you can see yes now they are nicely sorted by the method here and here, starting with underscore A, C, D, and by the URI. So whenever you now need to sort it by multiple arguments, you can do this now with this new feature in Laravel. Thank you, Fred. Validations in Laravel are already extremely powerful, but now even more. I do have here this little example for a profile page of a user where you can provide your address, street, city, postal code, and country. And then there's also a shipping address and you can see you want to use the same one as your personal address. Then you don't have to provide anything or you can say you want to use a different one and then you want to provide it. So if I try to submit this here, I've printed out here all of our validation errors. You can see for every field, we get a validation error. So the first three ones here at the top, but also for the shipping address, we also have those and this is what we want. We also want these fields here for the shipping address to uh, throw a validation error because these are required here, but actually they're not always required here. So if I say yes here and submit this, oh, we still have our validation errors also for the other fields. So why is this now? We don't see them here. If we click yes, they're also not submitted here, but still they are required. And the reason is here inside our controller where I've provided the validation rules, I have set all fields with the rule required. And when you think about it, it is required, but it's not always required. It's only required if our value for used personal address is false. And before this level release, the only thing what you could use is required if accepted. So this is if a specific value from your form, a specific submitted value input, like a radio or checkbox or any other input is true. But now we have a new feature, which is called required if declined, which is kind of the opposite. And the value that we want to provide here, so the name of the field is use personal address. So that's the name of the radio import, which we have on our front end which we have, or do we have it here? So here I've set this value to true and here I've set it to false. Okay, let's try this now again. First, we have here no, so we want to provide this. So here now this should be required and we should, should see the OS failing and we do here. That's working and you can also see here the street ad address shipping field is required when user personal address is declined. So this um, validation rule has also been added to this error message and we also see it for those two here. But now if we say yes, we don't want them to be required anymore. Let's try this now. Yeah, and now this is working. Only the first three fields are required and the others are not anymore. So it's pretty cool that we have next to required if accepted, now also required if declined which could be helpful like in this situation as well. So the next time you write something similar to this, be aware that you have those validation rules. Thank you, Timmy. 
And Laravel there is a new way to write tests expecting exceptions in Laravel. I'd like to show you this new feature of a specific example. So I'm inside here at test. Here we want to make sure that if our service is down, down, that we want to handle this in a specific way. So we have a new podcast. We try to publish a podcast by sending it to this podcast publish route. And then I'm asserting that we get a 503 back, which means service is down. Let's run this test. And this is passing. And fair enough, if we take a look at our published podcast controller, what we're doing here is we're trying to run this publish podcast action, which throws an exception in our case. Then we catch it here and still we are returning a 503. So the reason is that we want to make sure that we report an exception, but we don't want to return an exception. So we don't want the user to see the exception. The user should just see the response 503. All right, and this is working and that's why we're using the try catch here and here we're reporting our exception. But on the other side, we also want to make sure that we report the exception because we want to yeah, make sure that this is happening. And with the test before, we don't know this is being working. All right, so how do we do this? Again, I have a podcast here. Again, I'm hitting this publish podcast route. I'm asserting that we see a specific status, but now we also want to make sure that a specific exception was thrown. So normally in past, what you could use is the throws method here, and we want to make sure that we throw a service down exception. That's the exception which is being thrown. But if you run this, you will see this is not working. So this exception here was not being thrown. All right, so the first thing that you might think is, well, currently we are handling exceptions. So what we can do in Laravel is we can use the without exception handling method here directly in our test. But now this is still not working. And the reason, of course, is since we're handling the exception, we have no way here just checking that the exception was thrown like this. So this is not working. But something else what we can do now is we can use the new exceptions facade here and we're going to fake our exceptions. And now instead of this here, we can run similar to like other facades in Lava, like mail or notification. We can now use this facade and assert that something was reported. In our case, it's the service down exception class. We're providing here the class. And if we run this, this should already work and it does. So now with the second test, we're making sure that even though we're returning something else, that our exception was being reported. And we can also make this here a function. And then inside here, we can make another assertions like I can get the message. We need to return this here. And the message is, I think the one that we used service A is down. Let's run this again. And yeah, this is also passing. Now we're making two assertions. And what's happening here is we're making sure that this exception is being thrown, but we also make sure that the message is a specific one, which we can assert here as well. So to sum this feature up, you can now fake your exceptions like we've done here. And then later inside your test, you can run this nice assertion methods here to make sure that your exceptions are being reported because it's very important for you that you are reporting your exceptions because then they are sent to Flare or Sentry or your bug tracking system. And this way we can make sure this is happening even though we are handling those exceptions in our application and the user won't see those. Thank you, Nuno and Tim. And that's a wrap for this week. Please let me know which feature you like the most in the comments and see you the next time. Bye.